Hello everyone and welcome back to Catherine's Plates. Today I'm going to show you how to make Alice Spring Chicken. This is a copycat chicken recipe that you can get at a steakhouse. Specifically Outback is one that I know of. Now you can make this at home which is great but we're going to do that today and we're going to be using some chicken tenders. The first thing I've got sitting out here is a pan. We're going to go ahead and start cooking our bacon so that way it's already done. Now I'm going to place this in an oven that's been preheating at 425 degrees. We're going to lay the bacon onto some parchment paper that's lined the sheet pan. Now you want to make sure that your sheet pan has a lip to it so that the bacon grease doesn't drip into your oven. Now as the bacon is cooking, we can start making the marinade for the chicken. What I like to do when I'm cooking bacon is make extra. That way it's already made if you want it for something else, especially like bacon, lettuce, and tomato sandwich. I'm going to place this in the oven for 15 to 18 minutes. That way we can get it nice and crisp for our dish. While the bacon is cooking, we're going to go ahead now and make the sauce marinade for the chicken. You just need a small bowl. We're going to add mayonnaise, some honey, and some stone ground Dijon mustard. Half a cup of honey half a cup of the stone ground Dijon mustard. We're just going to mix this together with a whisk. It's going to make a delicious honey mustard sauce. Okay, I've taken the bacon out of the oven. What I'm going to do is lay them onto some paper towels to drain them. Okay, I'm going to be using some chicken tenders. Place them on a plate. I'm going to season with salt, some black pepper. We're going to flip them over and season the other side. I'm going to bring the sauce over. I'm just going to spoon the sauce over the chicken. I'm only going to use half of the sauce. I'm going to kind of cover it. We're going to turn the chicken over, sauce the other side. All right, we're going to save the other half of the sauce for the end of the recipe. All right, we're going to let these sit here for about five minutes and we're going to work on our onions. in a deep skillet. We're going to put it on medium-high heat. We're going to add one tablespoon of butter and we're going to start melting that while we chop our onion. Now it's just a medium yellow onion. Peel off that outer layer and cut off the two ends. I'm just going to cut it in half. Now I'm going to put my knife through the onion Make slices three quarters of the way through. I'm going to stand it on the end and then I'm going to cut through the onion three quarters of the way through two times. Then I'm just going to drag my knife through it. 
Now you can also add mushrooms to this also if you want to do that. All right, let's check our butter. All right, nice and sizzly. I'm going to go ahead and add the onion. Okay, I like to season my onion with some salt. Cook these down for about three to four minutes. Okay, the onions are nice and brown and softened. We're going to remove them from the pan and just put them into a small bowl and set them aside. All right, we're going to add some more butter. Two tablespoons. We're going to bring our chicken over. Okay, we're going to place our chicken in a single layer. All right, these are going to cook for three to four minutes on one side. And then we're going to flip them over and cook them an additional three to four minutes. We're looking for them to get nice and golden brown. We're not cooking these all the way through, but they should be about two thirds of the way through. Okay, look at that color right there. That's what you're looking for. All right, another three to four minutes. All right, before the chicken is done, we're just going to take our casserole dish. I'm going to spray it with some nonstick cooking spray. Now, I use avocado. It's the only thing in here, so it's really good. This will just keep the chicken from sticking to the dish and make cleanup easy. Just take a peek at your chicken. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, we're going to go ahead now and turn off the burner. We're going to remove the chicken and place it into our casserole dish in a single layer. Well, look at the color of those. Okay, we're going to come back with that delicious sauce that we had left over and spoon it over the chicken. Wherever the chicken is, we kind of want to make sure that it's wet on the bottom a little bit. We're going to top with our browned onions. Good stuff going on here. Okay, we're going to place our cooked bacon on top of the chicken. Oh, it smells so good. Okay, you can't have that without some shredded cheese. So we're going to sprinkle some right across the bacon. Ah, oh, magic stuff there. All right, we're going to place this in our oven. It's been preheated at 400 degrees. It's going to go in for 15 minutes where your chicken is cooked through. All right, I'm pulling these out of the baking dish. Look how scrumptious these look. Smells delicious. Garnish with some fresh parsley. My Alice Spring Chicken. Okay, don't these look delicious? I'm going to plate one up for you and give it a try. There you go. Look at how tender inside it is. Oh, you can see the bacon, the cheese, and then we've got the grilled onions kind of inside the cheese there. All right, I'm going to give this a try for you. Mmm. If you love honey mustard, you're going to love this. Today I'm going to show you how to make Big Mac sliders. Yeah, you know that Big Mac from McDonald's. We're going to take all those delicious flavors and we're going to compact it into a little slider. And they're going to be delicious. I'm going to bring you over here and we're going to start with that Big Mac sauce. We're just going to keep it easy with a few ingredients, so come on over. In just a small bowl, we're going to place half a cup of mayonnaise. That's the base for it. It's going to hold all those delicious flavors together. To that, we're going to add two tablespoons of 
creamy French dressing. Here's where all our flavors are coming. Whoop, a little extra there won't hurt. All right, sweet relish. One tablespoon. One teaspoon of yellow mustard. I've got one teaspoon of white vinegar. One teaspoon of white granulated sugar. Now let me tell you what I got here. I've got half a teaspoon of onion powder, half a teaspoon of garlic powder, half a teaspoon of paprika, and then I've got about a quarter teaspoon or a little less of salt. We're gonna add all that. All right, let's whisk this together. All right, give it a try and make sure your flavors are where you want them. Let's see. Mmm. Ooh, that's good. Yes, that tastes like that delicious sauce in a Big Mac. All right. Just take a little bit of plastic wrap, cover your dish. We're going to place it in the refrigerator until we're ready for it. All right, we're going to start that hamburger. Let's go ahead and start making the beef patties. Now we're going to fully cook these before we put them on the slider buns. So in a medium bowl, we're going to start off with about a little less than two pounds of ground beef. All right, let's season this up. About an eighth of a teaspoon of salt. We don't want to over salt. Right across the top. Some black pepper about a quarter of a teaspoon. We gotta flavor up the ground beef. There we go. Now I'm gonna shake in a ton of minced onion, or you can take a white or yellow onion and chop it up really fine. But you know what, I'm just gonna keep it easy. Come on out. We need some onion in here. A little more flavor, garlic powder. Right across the top. All right, I'm just going to put on some of my disposable kitchen gloves to help mix up all the meat here. I'm just going to use one hand. Get these out of the way. All right, while we're mixing this up, we're going to be using a 9 by 13 baking dish. What a fun way to make something that tastes like a Big Mac, right? Now I do have a Big Mac casserole out there that had tater tots in it. I will link that down below if you wanna try that recipe out also. That was a really good one. Mm. If you love tater tots, you like a tater tot casserole? Yeah, McDonald flavors. All right, let's go ahead now and place this into our baking dish. All right, we're gonna evenly spread it out. Now I do have these gloves linked in my Amazon store down below in the description box if you want to check those out. All right, there we go. Nice and even. We're going to place this in our oven at 350 degrees for 12 to 15 minutes until the hamburger meat is cooked through. Make sure you leave your oven on after you pull this out because we still have one step left that's going to go back in the oven. All right, I'll be back. All right, now what you need is a pack of Hawaiian King Rolls. We're going to start getting these ready while our hamburger is cooking in the oven. Usually they come in a pack of 12 or maybe 18. And I have a recipe for Hawaiian King Rolls. If you want to make your own, you can do that. Or for convenience, you can just buy them in the package like this here. Now these are Hawaiian style sweet rolls. They're the mini ones. We're gonna try to get them all out in a, one batch. You don't wanna pull these apart yet. 
All right, just like that. I'm using a serrated knife and it's very large. You usually cut bread with it. So I'm gonna start on the small end and go all the way over to the other small end in the center of the rolls. Try to keep it very centered as you're cutting through the rolls lengthwise. Now, you wanna keep looking on this side, on this side, on that side, and just make sure that your knife is not going upward through the bun. You want it right in the center. We're gonna separate the tops from the bottom. And then place the bottoms into the baking dish. And then put them, make sure they're all together. We're gonna set the tops aside for right now. We're ready to start building our Big Mac sliders. We're gonna take that sauce that was chilling in the refrigerator and we're going to spread it all over the bottom of the rolls that are in our nine by 13 baking dish. Mm-mm-mm, you know that's the best part. Now if you don't wanna make your own homemade sauce, then you can use Thousand Island dressing. Would come really close to it. Make sure every bite of these sandwiches will get that sauce. Slather it on. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to add the shredded iceberg lettuce all over the sauce. This is about one fourth of the head of lettuce. Now what I'm gonna do is place that big meat patty and I just used a pastry scraper and a large spatula to pull it out of the pan. And then we're just placing it right on top. Fit nice and even. All right, now what we're gonna do is place some American cheese slices right across the top. And I've got a helper over here, <laughs> the camera person. Trying not to eat any. He knows how to open American cheese slices. <laughs> he likes that on a grilled cheese. Mm -hmm. Grew up with it. All right, I'm just gonna layer. We all grew up with this kind of cheese, didn't we? Yeah. Y'all let me know down below. We're gonna take some sliced dill pickle chips. And we're gonna place them all over the cheese. All right, now we're gonna take our top buns and we're gonna place them on. All right, we got two tablespoons of melted butter and some sesame seeds. So go ahead and spread the, the melted butter on top of the rolls. Oh, a nice layer of flavor. Can't go wrong putting butter on something, huh? That is so that we can get our sesame seeds on top. All right, sesame seeds, sprinkle on top. Make it look like a Big Mac. Oh, there, oh, oh, there you go. Did we get them? Yep, got them. Got my oven still heated at the 350 degrees. We're gonna place this in there for about 10 minutes, just enough to allow that cheese to melt and get everything nice and ooey gooey. I'll be back. All right, what do y'all think? Look at my Big Mac sliders. I'm just gonna take a sharp knife and we're just gonna start cutting through these. Oh yeah, can y'all see the layers? Oh, my mouth is watering. All right, let's plate this up and give it a try for you. There we go. Got some delicious French fries that I just put in the air fryer, crisp up and get nice and hot. Oh, there we go. Let's take a bite. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Y'all, make your own Big Mac sliders. That tastes just like a Big Mac, probably even better. Today is Mexican day at our house. We are gonna show you how to make an anchorito. Yay! Now I got Thomas, my husband, in the kitchen. Hey. And anchorito is one of his only favorites at Taco Bell. And then they took it away and they made me sad. So we have to make one for him. 
Now, a couple of weeks ago, I showed y'all a Mexican pizza from Taco Bell, and also, before that, I showed you how to make a crunch wrap from Taco Bell, both copycat recipes. So I asked y'all for another recipe that I could do for you from Taco Bell, and this was an overwhelming response. Oh, man. He's, He's so happy. Was. Yeah, I am. <laughs> so I'm going to let Thomas tell you, what is an anchorito? It's a burrito and an enchilada that became friends. <laughs> and it's really easy to make. You're not going to believe this, all right? So we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to have Thomas start browning up. We got two pounds of ground beef just in a regular skillet here, so we're going to start browning that up. Now, an anchorito has onions with it, but we're going to dice it up and we're going to cook the onion in with the ground beef to kind of soften up the onion. All right, you ready? Where's the meat masher? <laughs> he needs a meat masher. Here we go. Now, depending on how many anchoritos you want to make is how much ground beef you're going to make. Now, we're a family of four, and we'll eat a lot of anchoritos. So, At least two. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to go ahead with the two pounds of ground beef. Now, if we don't need it all, that's great, because we can just put the leftover cooked taco meat into the refrigerator and use it for something else later. The tacos. Yeah. So let's go ahead and dice up an onion. Just going to cut off the ends. Cut off that outer layer. We're going to cut it in half. Make slices, very thin. And then just run your knife through it. I think this is good right here. We're going to take the onion and add it to the ground beef. And then what we'll do is soften down the onion as we finish cooking up the ground beef. I don't think it's broke up enough. Our ground beef and onion are almost done. So what we're going to do is flavor this with some taco seasoning. And I have my big jar of it. Look at that. Mm, make your own homemade blend. It's so easy to make, and then you have it on hand, and you don't have to go buy the packets at the store. But if you don't have your own homemade blend, or you don't want to make it, you can certainly use a packet of taco seasoning and put it into your ground beef. Two packets if you're doing the two pounds, or six tablespoons if you're doing homemade taco seasoning. All right, this is what it looks like. All natural. Go well, check out my recipe. It's on katherinesplates.com called Taco Seasoning Big Batch. All right, let's add it. Make sure you drain your ground beef before you do this step, which we did. One more, there we go. All right, we're gonna blend that all together and we're gonna add a quarter cup of water. Once you get that all mixed up, we're gonna turn the burner off and we're gonna let this sit for a few minutes while we heat up our beans. We are going to be doing refried beans. We're just going to heat these up, and I'm going to doctor them up with some flavor. All right. <laughs> Man overboard. Uh oh. Glad dog's All not right, down. All right, we're going to fix that up, and then we're going to be right back. All right, Thomas is going to open up one can of refried beans. It's about a 14 ounce can, and then we're going to doctor it up with a little bit of sour cream and a little bit of taco seasoning. We're going to flavor all layers. That's how it is at Catherine's Plate. Spurtle will work nicely. All right. He went to go get a spurtle. Spurtle! <laughs> Show him the spurtle. Spurtle! Spurtle! <laughs> now, if you like the things that we use in my kitchen, you can find it in my storefront. It's Amazon, and I'll link it down below in the description box. You can also find it at Catherine'sPlates.com in the store tab. All of the tools that I use in my kitchen and also tools that I wish I had in my kitchen are there also. <laughs> I'll build up one day. <laughs> one day. <laughs> you know, Christmas is right around the corner. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and add some sour cream, just a couple of tablespoons. Lighten that up. And two. There we go. And then we'll add about a half a tablespoon of taco seasoning. 
All right, well, I'm going to mix that up, heat it through, and then that'll be done. We're going to turn off the burner. We're going to start making our anchoritos. What you're going to need are burrito-sized tortillas. They are big. Pretty big. So we're going to lay that on a, first off, you're going to take a paper towel. Now I've wet this. I'm going to place half of it on the plate. We're going to place our tortilla on. And then you can put another paper towel right across that. And you can just start layering these up. Depends on how quick you want to make these. These will soften the tortillas up and make them really easy to roll. Like that there. All right, we're going to show you our burrito grande tortillas. This is what we use right here. They come 10 to a pack, so you want to base it off of that. Probably like two a person. Unless you're me. And then it's three. <laughs> we're going to pop these in the microwave for about 10 to 15 seconds just to get them nice and warm, easily pliable. We've got our tortillas. Now we've found that 30 seconds in the microwave really helps make them pliable. So, all right, we've got our refried beans. Beans. We've got our taco meat. Yummy. We've got our tortillas. Now, what we also have that you want to have ready is your red enchilada sauce. That's an original for Taco Bell's Enchiritos. So I've just poured it into a measuring cup. That way it's easy to pour. And then we have some cheese. I've got shredded cheddar cheese, and we've also got some Monterey Jack cheese that I found in the refrigerator. So we can mix those two, and that'll be pretty good. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go ahead and start building our Anchorito. All right, we've got a microwave safe plate. We're gonna place our grande tortilla on it. We're gonna add Plenty of beans, about two tablespoons of beans, right in the center, like a line. Just spread it out like a line. There we go. you had your own tool for that. <laughs> Yummy. Okay. Then we're going to put two tablespoons or so, maybe three, of the ground beef taco mixture on top of the beans. Yeah, it's probably going to be maybe four. As much as you want. With two pounds of ground beef, there's, there's plenty there. You think that enough? Yep, that's enough. <laughs> what we're going to do now is you want to pull in your sides. And then you're going to take the front end of your tortilla, bring it over the sides, kind of tuck it in, and you're going to start rolling. There we go. You want the seam side down. Mm. Like that looks good already. You're going to take your red enchilada sauce. We're going to pour it over the top. Be generous. Make sure you have plenty of cans. You want to cover it. Makes a nice sauce. There you go. Mm. My tummy growling. Can y'all hear that? <laughs> I'm going to put a little bit of Monterey Jack cheese across the top. Sharp cheddar cheese right across the top. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Look at that. All right, we're going to put our Anchorito into the microwave for one to two minutes until that cheese is nice and melted. All right, there it is. We're gonna decorate this up. Have sour cream, black olives. Y'all remember Taco Bell would just give you one olive right there. Yeah, this hey, is Catherine's plates though. Used to make me mad. We're, gonna, we're putting olives on it. And Thomas loves cilantro. cilantro. We're gonna give it a little bit of color here. There we go. Our copycat Taco Bell Enchirito. Yum. It's a cross between a burrito and an enchilada. What do y'all think? Y'all ready for Thomas to get a fork and a knife and dive in? Yes, we are. Let's go. Nice and soft. 
Ooh, mm -hmm. cheese. Very cheesy. Yummy. There we go. All right, does that remind you of an anchorito? Mm-hmm. Mm. Taco Bell gonna be mad at you. <laughs> Maybe. Mm. What do you think? Good? Mm -hmm. You like the onions cooked in with the ground beef mm -hmm. and that taco seasoning? Today I'm going to show you how to make a Cracker Barrel Copycat Hash Brown Casserole. This is an easy side dish to put together. You can even make it ahead of time if you want. It is really delicious. Y'all ready? It's right here. I'm going to bring you up here, show you what you're going to need, which is not much. But let me tell you, this side dish packs a punch for your office party, for your church gatherings, potlucks, if you want to just make it for home and have it as a side dish for your favorite meal, come on up so we can get this one started. You're going to need some shredded hash browns. We've got seasonings of salt, pepper, garlic powder. Now I've got some minced onion, or you can dice your own onion, or you can put onion powder in it, or just leave the onion out if you want. We've got butter, cheese, got a can of cream of soup. Now this is great because you can use any flavor soup you want. If you want cream of chicken, cream of celery, which I'm doing here because this is perfect for the holidays. And you can also do like a cheddar cheese soup if you want to do that instead of the cream of soups. And then we've got some sour cream going in to kind of smooth it all out. We're going to take the hash browns. You want to make sure that you thaw these out. They do come in your freezer section of your store. And this is one pound and four ounces, so about 20 ounces of hash browns. If you want to double up this recipe, there's a package of hash browns that are like 36 ounces, and that's totally fine to double up. So what we're going to do already thawed these out so we want to drain them. Now if you use hash browns and you leave them frozen they're gonna get really watery on you and you don't want that. So take a bowl. I'm gonna lay some paper towels in the inside. I'm gonna pour the hash browns, my thawed hash browns, into the bowl. I'm just gonna pat them down to get any excess moisture out of the potatoes. All right, I'm gonna just shake them into my bowl. Like that. We're gonna add some flavor. We're gonna start off with one stick or a half a cup of melted butter. Just go ahead and add those to the potatoes. We're going to add some salt and pepper, quarter teaspoon of each. I'm a sucker for copycat recipes. I love them. They can be very versatile, so you can add what you want to them. I have a copycat meatloaf recipe from Cracker Barrel. You should give that one a try. It's really delicious. All right, I'm going to add a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder. And then we're going to shake in some minced onion. And this is what I was talking about, where if you want to just dice your own onion, I would dice them very small, though, because this won't cook very long, and so you want a chance for the onion to just kind of cook through. Or you can put onion powder in. Just a couple of teaspoons, give it some flavor. That's it, right there. I've got a can of cream of celery soup. Oh, this will smell like the holidays. You can use cream of chicken soup if you like that, or you can even just take out the cream of soups and add like a cheddar cheese soup if you wanna do that. Anything that's creamy, it'll help bind it together. All right, now what we're gonna do 
to smooth out that cream of soup is I'm going to add half a cup of sour cream. That should be good. What we're going to do now is grate two cups of cheese, or you can use the already shredded cheese. Tastes good when you grate it yourself. I'm using a cheddar cheese. All right, what's your favorite side dish at Cracker Barrel if you've ever eaten there? All right, we're gonna place half of our cheese into the bowl with the potatoes. We're gonna mix this all together till it's well combined. Y'all let me know down in the comments what else works well for a hash brown casserole. It smells delicious in there. I'm telling you, pair this with that meatloaf from Cracker Barrel. I got the recipe down below if you want to check it out. Or you can even go to Catherine'sPlates.com and search for the recipe there. Cracker Barrel meatloaf. Yeah, it's really good. One of my husband's favorites. For this batch, I'm going to be using an 11 by 7 baking pan. That's about one and a half inches deep. I'm going to spread the mixture evenly throughout. First off, let's spray the baking dish with some nonstick cooking spray. There we go. Now we're going to place it into the pan. Now if you're going to double this batch, then I would use a uh, 9 by 13. You can reheat this, make it ahead of time. All right, we're going to spread it out evenly. And then you know it, we're going to top it with the rest of that shredded cheese. Now if you're wondering what you can eat this with, just think of Cracker Barrel with their fried chicken, their pot roast. Yeah, I love their pot roast. All right, I'm going to sprinkle the rest of the cheese on top. Now, if you want to use different cheeses, you can do that also. I've got my oven preheating at 350 degrees. Now, I've covered my pan with foil, spraying the inside of the foil before I placed it on here. That way, it'll keep the cheese from sticking to our foil. We're going to bake this for about 35 minutes. Then we're going to take the foil off, raise the heat to our oven to about 400 degrees, place this back in the oven uncovered for 5 to 10 minutes until that cheese is kind of lightly golden brown on top. I'll be back. Okay, I've just pulled this out of the oven. Look at that. Looks delicious. I'm going to add a little bit of some chives on top just for some color. A little pop. There we go. I'm going to grab a spoon, put some on a bowl, give it a try for you. Now you want to let it sit for about five or ten minutes. Kind of pull itself together. Oh, look at that creaminess. All right, I'm going to grab a fork. I'm going to give this a try. Here's my bite. Mm. Ooh, if you can do that cream of celery, mmm, tastes like the holidays for sure. Or whatever cream of soup you want. That's creamy. I still get the texture of the potato in there. Ooh, and the seasonings. Welcome back everyone. Today we are going to show you how to make Tex-Mex egg rolls. Now I have my daughter in the kitchen, Rihanna. Hello. 
She's in her early 20s, and I finally got her back in the kitchen. If you haven't seen her before, she was here back at Christmas time making hot chocolate cookies. Yeah, those were really good. These are one of the appetizers that they have on the menu. We've tried them, and we love them. Now, I'm taking the beans out of them because I'm not a fan, but you can certainly add them to this recipe today. All right, are you ready? I'm ready. She's ready to use our chopper here. Oh, I am. <laughs> All right, we're going to go ahead and we're going to clear the area, start chopping stuff, put everything into a pan to make our mixture. Then we're going to start rolling some egg rolls. And just like that, we're set up. Now, we're going to go ahead and use a skillet. We're going to chop up one bell pepper and one medium yellow onion. I'm going to hand this off to my daughter, Brianna. <laughs> and what I'm going to do is chop off the four sides of the bell pepper here. I'm going to place my skillet on a medium high heat. Add a tablespoon of cooking oil and start getting that nice and warm. And then Rihanna's going to start chopping these bell peppers up. Now we're just using the small blades here for some small dices. going to take this onion, peel off the outer layer. Now we're going to soften down these vegetables. You want to cook everything, that way all you're doing is heating it through when you're making the egg roll. Because they cook pretty fast. I have another hand in the kitchen there. <laughs> Y'all know Thomas, my husband. Alright, I'm just going to cut this into fours. Maybe chop that one more time. All right, we'll just put that on top of the blades. There we go. Beat that in. Maybe we'll give you like that many. Now what we're going to do is add that to our pan. This comes off, and then you just have your container here with your peppers and onions. Ooh, love that sound in the kitchen. All right, we want to soften these down until they are very tender. Now, while that's happening, we're going to get everything else ready because we're just going to dump it all in. So we've got about two to three cups of chicken. It's fully cooked. It's off of a rotisserie. So I'm going to have Rihanna just place it onto our cutting board here, chop it up into small dice-sized pieces. I want to show that y'all can make this stuff at home if you want to because, you know, the prices of food these days, even eating out an appetizer, costs almost as much as it does if you just bought a plate of food. I was seeing the prices. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's crazy. Now, we get asked a lot in the comments, where are we from? We live in Katy, Texas. In it's southeast Texas, so it's like one hour and a half away from... Galveston, which is the Gulf Coast, and we live about two and a half hours from San Antonio going west, and then about four hours from Dallas going kind of northeast. So that's where we're at. Katy, Texas is a small town, but it's growing by leaps and bounds. We've been here for about 21 years in Katy, Texas, ever since Rihanna was born 21 years ago. All right, so she's just running a knife through the chicken just to make sure that they're nice, tiny pieces. And what we'll do is add that to our peppers and onions. We're gonna use a pastry scraper to get the chicken in here. We're just gonna start heating things through, making that delicious mixture. There we go. We're gonna add in one teaspoon of minced garlic. I'm going to cook this down for about one minute so we can release the flavors of the garlic. Yep. So what we're going to do is chop up some cilantro, about two tablespoons really finely. We're going to add that in. I'm going to turn down my burner a little bit to a low. <laughs> That's the hand maneuver there. <laughs> I've got one cup of corn. I've drained it. We'll add that. This is a Tex-Mex, so it's going to have a lot of things in here that reminisce that. 
If you want to add a little jalapeno to it, you could do that. Mm -hmm. probably, probably around the time that you did the peppers and onions, but keeping this pretty mild today. All right, let's add the cilantro. Oh yeah, that smells good. Mm. All right, we've switched places. I'm going to dice up a Roma tomato. Now I've already cleaned it off and she's gonna start adding in the seasonings. So you're gonna start off with one teaspoon each of the chili powder and the ground cumin. We gotta give it that Tex-Mex flavor. All right, I just sliced down this way, then I turned it around and sliced the other way just about three quarters of the way through. And I'm just gonna drag my knife through. Now it's okay if you lose some of the juice because we want to keep this dry. We don't want it too wet. All right, while she's getting the seasonings in, I'm going to go ahead and add the tomatoes and then we'll stir all that together. All right, got that. Now go ahead and add in half a teaspoon of black pepper. And then we're going to add in four ounces of shredded cheese. Now this is a Mexican Cheddar Jack. Oh, it'll add some good flavor. The salt, go ahead and add in half a teaspoon. Let's add in the cheese. All right, Brianna, you're gonna mix this all up until it's well combined. All right, at this point, we're gonna turn off the burner, finish mixing it up. Y'all, make sure you give it a taste. Make sure your flavors are where you want them. Mmm. That's delicious. Mmm. Oh my. Y'all, don't worry, we still got a creamy sauce that we're gonna be using to dip our egg rolls into once we get the egg rolls made. I get the final say. <laughs> Everybody knows I'm quality. Thumbs up. That'll work. That good. <laughs> All right, we're going to set up to make our egg rolls. We're going to be using our large Dutch oven today. That way we don't get a lot of spattering going on. Now, I'm going to put it on a 350 degree heat or it's a medium high. Now we're just gonna add about one inch of oil to the bottom of our pot. Does that look like about an inch? So we're gonna bring that up to temperature. Now you can use your thermometer and check it every so often and make sure you get to that temperature. So in the meantime, we're gonna go ahead and make our egg rolls and get those ready to start frying up. We're gonna be using these egg roll wrappers here. Now we got about a pound of them. It's all you need, a little bit of water to seal, and then our meat mixture. <laughs> so what you want to do is take one out. I'm going to give you one. I'm going to take one, and then we're going to work on a clean counter, a work surface. All right, they're thin like this. We just pulled them out of the refrigerator because I didn't want to leave them on the countertop and have them get all gummy. So just be careful with that, the temperature of them. All right, we're going to set these aside. Now you want to have it like this. We're gonna take three tablespoons of our mixture here, and we're gonna place it in the center of our egg roll wrapper. Oh, that looks so good. Mm. Make these at home, appetizers. You know, football season is coming up, the holidays, anytime, like what we're gonna do, anytime. There we go. That looks good, good amount there. We're gonna make these until all that mixture's gone. <laughs> I got four people here. Okay, you're gonna take some water. Now I have a small dish of water here. You're just gonna take your finger and you're just gonna wet all four edges of your egg roll wrapper. Y'all, I don't know what it is, but when I start making something in the kitchen, my dog comes in and starts drinking water heavily. All of a sudden, <laughs> Bailey <laughs> is like very thirsty. <laughs> All right, once you get that done, you there? Mm -hmm. All right, we're gonna move that out of the way. You wanna take your bottom point of your diamond shape. You're gonna pull it over the mixture, over, 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 over. You're gonna kinda tuck it in, squish it in, squish, squish, roll it back. 
Okay, take your sides, you're gonna pull them in tightly, hold it just like that. Take the other one in tightly. You wanna make these tight so they don't break up on you. You're gonna roll and roll. Now, if it breaks on you a little bit, just take a little bit of water and then just kind of mush it together. There we go. All right, it'll be totally fine. We're gonna take a plate over here and put them on there so we have room to make the rest. All right, we've got our egg rolls all rolled up and ready to go. Our oil is almost ready. You wanna make sure you're at the 350 degrees on that. Now, I'm gonna be using a sheet pan lined with foil. I've got a rack on top, that way when they're done, we can place them on there, they can drain and get nice and crispy. Don't put them on paper towels, you guys, because all that will do is get them nice and mushy, and you don't want that. We're going to be using our spider tool here to get them out and rotate them around. All right, I'm just going to drop a piece of egg roll wrapper in there. Let's see what it does. Oh, yeah. You see how it sizzled and came up to the top? Perfect. Take your spider tool. We're going to place an egg roll on it. Now, this is where you need to be careful. To place it in, let it sit for just a few seconds to kind of get going, and then we'll spread it out. And then we're going to roll it out. There we go. You can do about three or four of them at a time. All right, we're going to cook these until they're golden brown on all sides. And they're gonna be nice and crispy. You can tell they're bubbling up. Move them around. Should take about four to five minutes. Okay, these are nice and golden brown on all sides. We're gonna remove them. Shake off any excess grease. And then I got my pan close by. We're gonna place it on there. And then we're gonna let them drain. Look at that. Oh, wee. Brianna said these look better than the ones at the Cheesecake Factory. They that do. She said? <laughs> she said they're bigger, more filling. They just look better. Oh, I got both of them on there. There we go. What do y'all think? We're going to finish the rest of these off, and then we got a dipping sauce to make. We're going to make an avocado sour cream sauce. It's going to have some chopped cilantro in it too. So Rihanna's going to put this one together. So in a just a small bowl, kind of a medium small bowl, we're going to add in four ounces of diced avocado. Now this is, comes in a container that you can get from your store. It's already pre-done for you. And then to that we're going to add one cup of sour cream. Okay, we're going to add in eight ounces of very soft cream cheese and what I did was I just put a block into the microwave for about 30 seconds and I'm just going to mash it up a little bit. Now I did this while Rihanna was chopping up that cilantro. All right, you're going to add that and then she's going to combine it all together. All right, so we got black pepper went in, salt went in. What else we got going on? Some chili powder. And cumin powder. After we mix this up, we're gonna serve it up with our egg rolls. All right, y'all, what do you think of our appetizers? Tex-Mex egg rolls. This is a cheesecake factory copycat recipe. All right, we're fixing to cut into one, dip it into that delicious sauce, and give it a try for you. Oh, you hear that crunch? Ooh, mm-mm-mm, uh-oh. Look at that. Okay, I'm gonna eat both of them. Uh, I, I, um, excuse me. <laughs> All right, I'm sharing. Mmm, mmm. 
Oh my god. Is that good? Mm-hmm. That filling is delicious. You guys need to make these. <laughs> You're gonna surprise everybody with these. And it made, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We still have more back here. All right, it made 13 of these, the way I did them anyway. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to make a delicious sweet and sour chicken. This is a Chinese kind of takeout copycat recipe. Instead of going out to get it, just make your own. Now the best part of this recipe is the sauce, the chicken, and the vegetables that go into it. So you want to make sure that everything is kind of prepped along the way because it comes together quickly. Grab your bowl, we're going to start making that sauce first. In a medium bowl, we're going to place half a cup of white granulated sugar, a quarter cup brown sugar packed, third cup of ketchup, half a cup of apple cider vinegar, make sure you shake it up, mmm, go. One tablespoon of soy sauce. All right, I minced up two large cloves of garlic. A little bit of cracked black pepper. Eighth of a teaspoon. Bring your whisk, whisk it all together. Mmm, that smells good. We're gonna set this aside and let's talk about our chicken. All right, I'm using two large chicken breasts. They're boneless, skinless, cutting them into thin pieces. Now I've already kind of trimmed off any excess fat. I'm just gonna cut that into bite-sized pieces, keeping them all the same size. They're all equal pieces here. Let's set that aside and let's start making the coating. I've got my workstation all set up, so it's just one, two, three. Now I've got a Ziploc bag. We're gonna place one third cup of cornstarch into it. That'll help thicken the sauce. Now in a medium bowl, I'm just gonna crack two eggs and then we're gonna whisk those up. Y'all know that's my sink. All right, I saw a shell. Make sure you look for them. All right, take a fork, whisk this together really good. All right, we got another Ziploc bag on a stand over here. I love these stands. So we've got, uh, let's see, one third cup of all-purpose flour. Now I'm gonna season my flour with a little bit of salt. Crack some in there, probably about an eighth of a teaspoon, not very much. Some black pepper, about the same. We just want to keep everything seasoned along the way. Let's see, some onion powder, same amount. Might have been a little bit more. And some garlic powder, just to enhance the flavor. And I'm just going to grab that really quick and just give it a shake in there for the seasonings. We're gonna add our chicken to the cornstarch and get that nice and coated. All right, when we get it all into the bag, we're gonna take it off the stand. And we're gonna shake it up good. Make sure you seal your bag. You don't want all that coming out at you. Coat it good. All right, we're going to bring our egg mixture over. All right, we're going to take it out of the bag. I think we got it all out. We're going to coat this, and then we're going to move it on into our flour bag here. All right, once you get it all in there, we're going to shake it up. Make sure you close your bag. We're going to prep our vegetables and get those ready. You want about one inch pieces. That's how they come in a Chinese dish, right? 
I am using a red bell pepper. I'm gonna get that chopped up. And then we're gonna chop up a green bell pepper. Nice green bell pepper. And then we're gonna do some onions. I definitely wanna get the red onion in there. Cut it in half. Big chops. I love Chinese food. All right, we're gonna take a yellow onion. I'm just gonna do half of it. We're gonna have ready one can of pineapple chunks. I've drained it very good. <laughs> okay, we're gonna place a large deep skillet over medium high heat. We're gonna add about enough oil in there for it to be about one inch. And then we're gonna start heating that up. One about a 350 degrees. You can use a thermometer. You can also use like the back end of a wooden spoon and test the heat of your oil. Just put it in there and if it starts sizzling on the bottom, then your oil is hot enough. All right, we'll let that heat up. Now this pan is carbon steel. My husband got it for me at Christmas time and it's really awesome. Now, if you're interested in it or you want to see what it looks like, I will link it in my store, my Amazon store. And you can find that in my recipe blog at katherinesplates.com and just go to the store items. Now, let's talk about the pan really quick while the oil is heating up. I'm using a large pan. I just lined it with some foil and then I put a rack on it. That way, when the chicken comes out of the pan, we can put it on here and it'll drain and remain crispy. Now, don't lay it on a plate with paper towels, all right, because it'll get soggy and you don't want that. We're over 350 degrees. Let's go ahead and add our chicken. We're gonna do this in batches. So I'll put the first batch in. Make a single layer with it. Now, these aren't gonna take very long to cook, but you wanna do make sure that the chicken is cooked through. Just pulling them apart. All right, once we get them all pulled apart, we're gonna cook them for about two to three minutes on one side and then flip them over. All right, we're gonna flip these over. We'll start moving them around. We'll cook them two more minutes. All right, we're gonna lay them on our rack. All right, we're gonna start our second batch. Let's get these all separated. All right, I've got them all pulled apart. We're gonna cook them for about two minutes and then just start stirring them around until they get golden brown. It's been four minutes in here. I've just been moving them around. We're gonna take them out, place them with the rest of them. Oh yeah, look at that. We're gonna turn off the burner for just a minute. Drain a lot of the excess grease off. Now what we're gonna do is drain all the grease out of the pan, except for a couple tablespoons, about two or three. I'm gonna bring it back to a medium high heat. So I had drained my oil into a bowl that had a big sheet of foil into it. That way it can cool off and then you can do what you need to with it. All right, let's go ahead and add our peppers, our onions. We're gonna saute these down for just a few minutes until they get nice and soft. You know, place some salt right across the top, season our veggies, and some black pepper. All right, halfway through the cooking time, we're gonna go ahead and add our drained pineapple chunks. Start heating that through. Okay, we're ready to add our sauce. Just kind of give it a whisk. Let's pour that in. Ooh. We're gonna stir this all together. Make sure everything's nice and coated. This will take about 30 seconds. I've got my cooked chicken. We're gonna add it right on in. Yes, and we did try a piece. <laughs> We're always in everything. All oh, these drained well, they're nice and crispy. Look at that, yeah. Just take a big wooden spoon and then just start coating the chicken with that sauce. We're gonna finish cooking this until the sauce has thickened and starts to bubble. Okay, look at that. That sauce has absorbed into the chicken, veggies, and everything. It's nice and thick. Look at the coating on there. We're gonna turn off the burner. 
Now, if you need to add a little bit more cornstarch to thicken your sauce, you can add a little cornstarch slurry, which is just a couple tablespoons of cornstarch, about a quarter cup of water. Mix that together and then pour it in and then it'll thicken up really fast. Okay, you guys, I'm ready to serve that up. Okay, we're gonna set up our plate. Got some sticky rice that we made. I was cooking this the same time that I was frying up the chicken because everything kind of comes together pretty quickly. Oh, look at that. Look at that thick sauce, the chicken, the peppers, some green onion that I chopped up right across the top, some sesame seeds. There we go. We just need some chopsticks or a fork in my case. That's my bite. Mm, let's dive in. Mm. That's delicious. Chinese take home copycat sweet and sour chicken. Put it over your rice. That chicken is nice and tender. I love that coating on it. The peppers, nice, got a nice little crunch to them. Oh, and that sauce just pulls it all together. Who remembers those Costco chicken bakes? Delicious ingredients wrapped up in pizza crust and baked to a golden brown crispy crust. Five ingredients. If you've never heard of this, it's an easy dinner idea. You can even make it for lunch, which we're gonna do today. It serves four, so we're gonna go ahead and get started with the first ingredient, which is cooked chicken, and you're gonna need about two cups. I'm using rotisserie chicken. I just chopped it up. This is the white meat. Now you can bake your own chicken. You can use canned chicken if you wanna use that. You can boil chicken or you can place it in the crock pot and cook it that way. You just wanna make sure that it's cooked chicken and you have two cups. Our second ingredient is bacon. Now you wanna make sure that it's nice and crisp I cooked mine in the air fryer for 350 degrees for 11 minutes and I've got six pieces of bacon here. Now the original recipe that I found for the copycat chicken bake uses 10 pieces of bacon, but you can put in whatever you want. We're gonna crumble it in. See how crisp that bacon is? Mmm, look at that. Costco discontinued this menu item off of their deli a couple of years ago. So if you remember it, you remember it. Now, we're gonna be using one and a half cups of Italian cheese blend. It's nice and shredded, we'll add that. Now I've got two cups in here. We're gonna save half a cup of it for the end of the recipe. All right, that looks good right here. Save the rest. We're gonna be using a creamy Caesar dressing. Now I use this brand right here, Ken's Steakhouse. We need something to pull this all together. One and a half cups. All right, I'm gonna put it into this measuring tool here. Now we're gonna save the rest of this. This is a 16 fluid ounce, so half a cup we're gonna save for the end of the recipe, along with the cheese right here. All right, let's add it in. Ooh, that dressing smells good. All right, see how simple that was to get all that dressing out of there? And then I'm just gonna use a spatula, clean off the end there. Let's blend this all together. We're gonna make these like hot pockets. It's gonna be a delicious crust wrapped around this delicious mixture here. That looks delicious. We're gonna set this aside. And then what we're gonna do is roll out some pizza dough. We're gonna keep it really simple. I'm using this pizza crust. It's a classic and it's from Pillsbury. We're gonna roll this out. I'm just gonna use my silicone mat here keeps everything from sticking. So we're gonna open this up. Let me tell you how many ounces this is. 13.8 ounces. So if you wanna make your own pizza dough, that's what you'll need. 
These will make perfect like appetizers, a lunch, a dinner, a snack, whatever you want to use for these. You can make them smaller than what I'm going to make them for the perfect appetizer, small bite, football food, anything like that. All right, we're going to pop this open. Yeah, I was scared. <laughs> All right, I'm going to twist it open, just put it on my mat. Now, if you're just using a work surface that's clean, then you can sprinkle some flour on it and sprinkle some flour on top of your dough. All right, we're going to roll this out. I'm glad this thing comes in a rectangular shape because we want it in a rectangular shape. What I'm going to do is just sprinkle a little bit of flour on top. That way we can roll it out with a rolling pin. Keep it nice and even. We're just spreading it out just a little bit, thinning it out so it's not so thick. It doesn't have to be perfect. We just want the same thickness, about a quarter of an inch. And that's it for rolling it. We're going to take our pizza cutter. Woo. We're going to cut this in half lengthwise. Just eyeball it. That looks good. And then we'll just cut that in half. Four equal parts, or as equal as you can get them. <laughs> I'm going to spread them out a little bit. Let's bring our mixture back over. We're going to divide the mixture into fours, and we're going to place it in the center of each rectangular square shaped dough here. Leave an edge. Mmm. God, it smells delicious. And that's it, you guys. There's five ingredients. I'm going to show you how you're going to complete these. I probably had a lot of chicken in there, so I may not be using the whole mixture, and I can use it for something else. Just heck, use it like a chicken salad, or I might be using it all. <laughs> you want to fill these good. All right, starting on the long end closest to you, you're going to pick up the dough, pull it towards you, and then you're going to pull it over the mixture. And then you're going to bring the top edge of the long edge, bring it over, and then you're going to pinch them together. There we go, just like that. Pinch it together. I kind of roll it a little bit like pizza dough. There we go. And then you're going to come off to the side. You're just going to bring the edges in. Do this side. Roll it in and pinch. Now we're going to place this seam side down on a baking sheet that I've lined with some parchment paper or you can use some tin foil and just spray it with some nonstick cooking spray. We're going to go ahead and place them on there. All right, that's number two. We're going to take the rest of the Caesar dressing. We had half a cup. We're just going to put it in a bowl. That's good right there. I tipped it upside down while we were making these. That way all that dressing fell down to the bottom. We're going to take a pastry brush and we're going to brush the dough on the sides and the top. Mm. Oh my gosh. Keep giving it flavor, right? We're not done. Now what we're going to do is take the remainder of that cheese and we're going to sprinkle it right on top of each chicken bake here. Right over that dressing. Remember we had half a cup of that shredded cheese left over. Yeah, that's where it's going. We've got the oven preheating at 400 degrees. We're going to bake these for 15 to 20 minutes until that pizza dough is nice and crisp and golden brown. I'm going to show you what the insides of these look like and give it a try for you. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Make sure you're commenting down below what you think if you've ever had these before. Make sure you subscribe if you are new and you want to see more videos like this one. I'll be back 
show you the finished product. I cooled these down just a little bit so they'll be nice and easy to eat. Let's cut into one and give it a try. I'm using a bread knife. It's got a serrated edge to it so we can cut right through. Let's take a look. Mmm, look at that crust wrapped around that delicious filling. Golden brown all the way around. Let's give it a try. Mmm. That's delicious. This is the perfect hold in your hand meal. Oh my goodness, you guys. Your family's gonna love these. You're going to love these. You can half this recipe if you want. You can double the recipe if you want. Make as many as you like. If you want to make this ahead of time, make the mixture, place it in your refrigerator, and then when you're ready, roll out your dough, put the mixture in, and pop them in the oven, all right? Don't make these with the dough first and put them in your refrigerator. They won't work like that. All right, you guys, give me a thumbs up. Comment down below what you think of my chicken bake, the Costco copycat recipe. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button down below and that bell notification. That way you'll always know when shows like this one here are posted. I'll see y'all on the next episode. Bye.